122 over about 78 or so. Not bad. In this video, we're gonna learn what those two numbers mean, why we have to have two numbers in the first place for one blood pressure reading. And we'll also take a look at some of the differences between arteries, veins, and capillaries in the body. So let's jump to the whiteboard and get started. Let's start with the differences between arteries and veins. Now the definition of an artery is a blood vessel that takes blood away from the heart. I just remember artery and away, they both start with the letter A. And then by definition, veins are always bringing blood back to the heart, like the verb venir to come back in Spanish. All veins are gonna be taking blood back to the heart. Now in my diagram here of the artery and the vein, you can already see some differences between the two. One of those is that I colored in the artery diagram in red and the vein diagram in blue. Now, in physiology, we always use red to represent high oxygen blood and blue to represent low oxygen blood. The arteries and veins aren't really blue or red. So arteries are gonna be carrying high oxygen blood, but I do have to specify one thing, that that's only in the systemic circuit. The systemic circuit is when blood flows through the aorta out to all of the parts of the body. Basically everything except for the pulmonary arteries and the pulmonary veins. The pulmonary artery and pulmonary veins are an exception to this rule, and actually the pulmonary artery is gonna be the one artery that takes low oxygen blood away from the heart. So remember, arteries carry high oxygen blood, except for the pulmonary artery, which is carrying low oxygen blood to the lungs. But all other arteries in the body besides the pulmonary artery are gonna be carrying high oxygen blood out to the cells to give that oxygen away. Conversely, veins are always gonna be carrying low oxygen blood, except for the pulmonary vein, which carries high oxygen blood back to the heart. But all the other veins in the body are gonna be carrying low oxygen blood that's already gone out to the cells of the body, back to the heart, so it can get pumped to the lungs. So that's what I mean by the systemic circuit there. That's blood that's carried through the aorta, to all the capillaries of the body, and then back through the vena cavas. Basically, the systemic circuit is everything except for the pulmonary artery and pulmonary vein. Before we get into more differences, let's take a look at the layers of the blood vessels themselves. There's three main layers involved here. The outer layer is a layer of connective tissue. This outer connective tissue layer will help give the blood vessel its shape and give it some strength and support. Just deep or inside to that connective tissue layer is a layer of smooth muscle. That smooth muscle is gonna to help to regulate the internal diameter of the blood vessel. It's also gonna to help to push some blood through, especially in the veins, we'll see in a moment. And finally, on the very inside or deepest layer, we have epithelial tissue. And the epithelial tissue is gonna provide a very smooth surface for blood to flow past. So connective tissue on the outside to give it its shape and structure. Smooth muscle to help regulate the internal diameter and also to help push blood through the veins. And finally, epithelial tissue on the inside, which provides a low friction surface for the blood to flow against. Now, all of the other differences we talk about are gonna tie back to this one specific difference, which is gonna be how the blood is flowing through or what's causing the blood to flow through the arteries versus the veins, and it's a huge difference. For the arteries, it's the heart itself that's pumping the blood through the arteries. I think most people assume that the heart is gonna pump blood through the arteries as well as the veins, but that's not true. The heart only pumps blood through the arteries. It pumps blood away from itself through the arteries at a very high pressure. The veins, on the other hand, the blood is gonna be pushed through, not pumped with a high pressure, but pushed through at a lower pressure by smooth muscle and by movement. Smooth muscle, because remember, there's a layer of tissue here that's smooth muscle, and that's gonna provide some force to help push that blood through. And by movement, I'm referring to like getting up and walking around and just physical movements that we do. That's gonna apply some different forces on our veins, which is gonna help push the blood through. So if you wanna get blood circulating a little bit better through your veins, get up and move around. So that big difference, that the heart pumps blood through the arteries, but blood moves through the veins because of smooth muscle and movement, that difference is gonna account for the rest of the differences that we talk about. So the first one I kind of already mentioned is that the arteries have high pressure blood, whereas the veins are gonna have low pressure blood. And again, that's because of the cause of blood moving through them. The arteries, it's caused by the heart pumping, so that's gonna have to be at a high pressure to push all that blood through. Whereas the veins, the blood's gonna be moving at a low pressure. The next difference is that the arteries have very thick walls, whereas the veins have very thin walls. And that's gonna tie back to this fact that blood is traveling through the arteries at a very high pressure. Well, if it's traveling at a high pressure, you need a thicker wall or a stronger wall so that those blood vessels don't get damaged and rupture very easily. Because it's at that high pressure, they have to have some extra kind of padding to, to give them more protection and so they don't 
rupture and break. The veins, however, the blood's moving at such a low pressure, we can actually have a lot thinner walls and be totally fine with that. Now, because the arteries have a thicker wall, they're gonna have a thinner lumen. The lumen is the space inside that the blood is actually traveling through. That's the lumen. So we have the wall here, but then the space inside is the lumen. So if these walls are thicker, the lumen or the space inside the blood vessel is gonna be smaller. And we can compare that to the veins here. You see there's a lot more space in the veins compared to in the arteries. In other words, the veins have a much thicker lumen. Another thing that you've probably already noticed is that there's an extra structure here in the veins. That's gonna be a valve. And basically the way valves work is they're kind of like this and they allow blood to flow one way, but not the other way. So why would the veins need valves, but the arteries don't? Well, again, we can tie that back to the fact that the heart is pumping the blood through the arteries, but not through the veins. Because the heart is pumping at such a high pressure, there's very little chance of the blood flowing back the wrong direction because the pressure on the blood to move in the correct direction is so high. So they don't really need a valve to ensure that blood moves in one direction. The veins, however, a lot of the veins, like the veins in our legs, they're bringing blood upward, which is working against gravity, and it's happening at a low pressure. So we gotta make sure that any progress the blood makes doesn't get negated by it flowing the wrong way. So we gotta have these one-way valves. Blood will pass up through it, but if it starts to move back the wrong way, that valve is gonna prevent it from flowing backward. So veins have valves, arteries don't have valves. Those are some of the primary differences between arteries and veins, but there is one more blood vessel we have to talk about, which is the connection between the two, and here's where a lot of the action happens. These blood vessels are called capillaries, and the main function of capillaries is gas exchange between the blood vessel, or the blood cells that are in the blood vessels. They've got all that hemoglobin, which is gonna be storing oxygen, and that oxygen needs to get passed out of the capillaries to all of the tissue cells that these blood vessels are taking the blood to. Take a look at the walls of the capillaries. There's just one layer. It's a layer of epithelial cells and it's a very thin layer. Now, why would we need a thin layer? Well, think about it. If the purpose of this is to allow gas to pass in and out of the blood vessel, well, then we need a thin layer to make that happen easier. So the capillaries have a very thin epithelial layer so that the oxygen can pass back and forth as well as the carbon dioxide passing into the blood cells for them to take that carbon dioxide away. So those are some of the major differences between arteries and veins. Now let's take a look at blood pressure readings and what those mean. In the intro of the video, I gave a blood pressure reading. Here's another example of a blood pressure reading, 120 over 80 or 120 mmHg over 80 mmHg. MMHG stands for millimeters of mercury. It's a unit of pressure that ties back to thermometers that used to have mercury inside of them. But the main thing that we need to know is that MMHG is the blood pressure unit that we use. So there's two numbers here and it's written as a fraction, but it's not a fraction. These are two separate numbers that mean two separate things. They're not a ratio, they're not a fraction. We just happen to write it that way and it's a little bit misleading. Now the top reading is the systolic pressure. The systolic pressure, it's an arterial pressure, so it's not the pressure in the veins, it's pressure in arteries. And specifically, it's gonna be the pressure in the artery that runs through our arm right here. And it's the pressure during our heart beat or when the heart is contracted. So whenever my heart is contracted, if my blood pressure is 120 over 80, that means that when my heart beats, my blood pressure shoots up to 120. That second number or bottom number we call the diastolic pressure. That number is always gonna be lower than the systolic pressure. The diastolic pressure is also an arterial pressure. Misconception alert, a lot of times students think that the systolic pressure, well, that would be the pressure in the arteries. The diastolic pressure would be the pressure in the veins, which makes sense because I already said that the pressure in the arteries is higher than the pressure in the veins, but it's just not true. Systolic and diastolic pressures are both pressures of arteries. Here's the real difference. The difference between systolic and diastolic is that diastolic is the pressure between heartbeats. So when my heart beats, my pressure jumps up to 120, and then when my heart relaxes, it goes down to 80. 120, 80, 120, 80. Or in other words, systolic, diastolic, systolic, diastolic, systolic, diastolic. So whenever you do a blood pressure reading, you're reading the fluctuation of blood pressure up to the systolic and down to the diastolic as the heart beats and relaxes. Now I use the 120 over 80 as my example blood pressure because that's an important cutoff to remember when you're thinking about good blood pressures versus dangerous blood pressures. So a person is considered to have normal or healthy blood pressure whenever the systolic is less than 120 and the diastolic is less than 80. 
So for example, um, 115 over 77 will be a great blood pressure. As soon as your blood pressure starts to creep up over 120 and 80, then you need to start thinking about your blood pressure and how you can make that drop down a little bit lower. We call high blood pressure hypertension. It just means a high pressure. Hyper for high, tension for pressure. And high blood pressure is generally considered if your systolic is over 130 or if your diastolic is over 80. So if either of those is true, you'd be considered to have hypertension. Now, why is high blood pressure bad? If my blood pressure gets kind of high, it gets up to 140 or 150 over 90 or over 100, I'm probably not gonna notice too many differences. The problem comes if that stays high over a long period of time. So if over the next five years of my life, my blood pressure is staying high like that, that's gonna greatly increase my chance of heart attack and stroke, which are the two most common killers of people in America. Complications from high blood pressure, heart attack and stroke. Now, if your blood pressure drops too low, that can be bad too. That can cause somebody to pass out. And in fact, a lot of times if somebody has um, trouble like passing out a lot or passing out easily, oftentimes those people have a lower blood pressure than kind of that, you know, 110, 70 sort of range. Next, let's take a look at one of my favorite graphs of blood pressure here. I really like this graph because it ties a lot of the things we've been talking about together. We're going to look at the graph of blood pressure as the blood passes from these vessels over here to over here. So starting in the aorta to the arteries to the arterioles, which are kind of smaller branches of arteries then to the capillaries, then to the venules, which are small veins that connect together to form our veins, which then connect together to form our vena cavas, the superior and inferior. And we'll look at how that blood pressure changes as we go between those different blood vessels. So we'll start with the aorta and artery side of it. We've got our systolic blood pressure, which is gonna be you know, somewhere around 120 or so. And as we move from the aorta to arteries to arterioles, that pressure is gonna drop. So the pressure is highest in our aorta and arteries and then it starts to drop down as we approach the capillaries. Our diastolic, we could graph that as well, and that's gonna start around 80 or so, and it's gonna to start to drop again, just like the systolic, it's gonna drop lower um, as we approach the arterioles and the capillaries. And of course, the whole reason that we have systolic and diastolic pressures is because our heart is beating and increasing that pressure to systolic and back to diastolic. So up to systolic, back to diastolic. And so I like to show this on the graph where it kind of goes down and then up. It's oscillating between the systolic and diastolic as our heart beats and relaxes. The rest of our graph won't have those oscillations though because remember the heart isn't pumping blood through the veins. So at this point we've reached the capillaries and the blood pressure has dropped even more. Notice that the blood pressure down in the capillaries were kind of in the 20 mmHg range, much, much, much lower. And as we approach the veins in the vena cava, we're getting really close to a blood pressure of almost zero. So if the blood pressure is zero, how is the blood making its way through the veins? Well, that's because of three things that we talked about already. Smooth muscle in the veins, kind of helping push it through. Movement from us just doing our normal daily activities, which is gonna apply pressures to the veins and help push some of that blood through. And our valves play a huge role in making sure that the blood doesn't pass the wrong way through our veins. So hopefully this was helpful in you understanding what blood pressure readings mean the difference between systolic and diastolic pressure, what some normal and dangerous blood pressures are, as well as some of the primary differences between arteries and veins. Pardon this interruption. Forces on our veins throughout our body. So if over the next five years, so if over the